Hi. During, uh, during the last video, we've actually derived this three result. So we've got the expansion, macular expansion, which is a perfect representation of a sine, cosine, and natural exponential function. However, remember that before, when we were trying to get, uh, uh, when we were trying to get complementary function for the complex root case, this is what we arrived at. So, in this case, maybe it is better if we concentrate on two very, very specific cases. What do I mean by that? First, it's going to be the case of e to the power i times v, but we're going to use theta, right? Because it's more familiar to us. So let's call it i times theta. So what we've got over here? Okay, so we are going to use the expansion for e to the power of x, but instead of x, we're just going to write i theta. So what do we get here? 1 plus i theta uh, plus uh, i theta square over 2 factorial plus i theta to the power q to over 3 factorial plus i theta to the power of 4 over 5 factorial plus i theta to the power of 5 over 5 factor. Okay, let's rewrite those expressions slightly differently. Uh, and first time, let's, let's just uh, do it very slowly. Look, here we don't have a problem. This is just 1. This is just i to the power of i times theta. But here appears the problem, right? Because, look, this is equal to how much? This is i squared times theta, theta squared over 2 factorial. But look, i is square root of negative 1. So if I'm going to take it to the power of 2, it's going to be equal to negative 1. So look, this number over here turns into negative theta squared over 2 factorial. And look, similarly, over here, what do I have? I theta to the power of 3 and I to the power of 3 over 3 factorial. So now let's look at this expression. This is negative 1 to the power of 3. Right? So, how much is that? Well, this is the same as which we already calculated to be negative 1. So, this reminds us e, but out of that we get minus up front. So, we got another expression with minus. This time it's going to be negative i theta cube over 3 factorial. Okay, and what is going to happen over here? Well, here we're going to have i to the power of 4 times theta to the power of 4 over 4 factorial. So, here the situation is even clearer because look, here we've got this situation. So, we've got negative 1 times negative 1 which is simply 1. Right? So now we're going to have plus plus 4 a theta to the power of 4 over 4 factorial. Okay, and I hope we can deal with this one also with relative ease. Look, what we're we going to get here? This is 
i to the power of 5 times theta to the power of 5 over 4 and 5 factorial, right? So what are we getting out of this? This is 1, right, times negative 1, so times i. So we get plus uh, i theta to the power of 5 over 5 factorial. Okay, so this, what we see over here, is our outcome. And then of course it continues like that. Can we somehow make sense of it? Okay, let's start organizing uh, a and let's start organizing uh, expressions over here, right? So, what do we get? Well, how about if I'm going to put 1 over here, I'm going to take second expression. And, okay, look, let, let, uh, the rule will be like, let's separate two types of expressions. What's with i? and the ones that don't have it, right? Okay, let's start with those that don't. So we've got that this is one plus theta squared over two factorial uh, minus, of course, I'm sorry, plus theta to the power of four over four factorial. What do we think would be the next expression like this? Hmm, probably, well, most definitely, it would be negative uh, negative six theta negative uh, theta to the power of six over six factorial, and then it would be plus theta to the power of eight over eight factorial, right? Then we would have minus something something. Now let's take all the other expressions and then take i out of the parentheses. What are we getting now? We are getting theta uh, minus theta cubed over 3 factorial plus theta to the power of 5 over 5 factorial. Uh, next expression would be minus theta to the power of 7 over 7 factorial, and the next one, theta to the power of 9 over 9 factorial, minus. Does those two expressions remind us something? Of course. Look, here we just have cosine function, while here uh, we have sine function. And this is how we obtain the first of the two Euler's relations. First Euler relation simply states that e to the power i times theta is equal to cosine theta plus i times sine theta. Okay, I hope this blows your mind a little bit because look at actually what we've done. We've taken e to the power of x, we've put inside of x an imaginary number and what did we get? Circular functions, trigonometric functions. So, I hope you can see that the application of, uh, of this result is amazing. But what I believe is even more amazing is how it happened that how it happens that one if we use imaginary power inside of E, 
we are getting, we can get results uh, that is something that we would never ever expect. So we get a circular motion. Okay, but let's go back to Euler's relations. We've done with the, we we done with the first one. Now we know actually how to calculate it better. Okay, so let's try. Again, we substitute uh, negative i theta this time instead of uh, x, right? Just like in this result. And what we get? First, 1 minus i theta plus i uh, uh, minus i theta squared over uh, over 2 factorial plus negative i theta to the power of 3 over 3 factorial plus negative i theta to the power of 4 over 4 factorial plus negative i theta to the power of 5 over 5 factorial okay and again let's calculate how much is that it's not going to be that, that problematic to us because we already know how to deal with the cases with i. So, how much is it? Well, we get this is, stays the same. This stays the same. How much will we get? Uh, 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 how much uh, are we going to get out of this expression? Well, negative theta squared over 2 uh, 2 factorial of course uh, then out of this we need to just remember that we got this additional minus so it will give us theta to the power of 3 over 3 uh, factorial and of course we cannot forget about i I'm sorry. Uh, then over here we're gonna have plus uh, a theta to the power of 4 over 4 factorial and minus i theta to the power of 5 over 5 factorial look you can if you do not get exactly those please do uh, the derivation in the same way I did so step by step, very slowly, those are the results on which you, uh, you get eventually. Okay, and again, let's organize those. Let's organize those. Uh, let's organize those expressions. First, into those that do not have a theta, a, I'm sorry, i inside them. So again, we've got 1 minus and plus and then now just to make things well I know already the answer so what we're going to do next is we're going to take expressions and we're going to take negative i out of them and what do we get in here? That this is theta minus theta cube over 3 factorial plus theta to the power of 5 over 5 factorial what do we get? again, very similar result this is cosine theta minus i times sine theta and this is how we get uh, this is how we get the second Euler's relation and look, again, we've done actually an amazing thing we've taken uh, we've taken uh, uh, e to imaginary power and what we got is the sum or a difference of two in this case a difference of two the cyclical uh, circular functions and let me just, uh, these Euler relations that you see over here, 
are an amazing result for many reasons. But I want to just tell you one that you might know from the internet. You know, very often in memes, uh, you hear about the most beautiful equation ever in mathematics. What is this equation? Okay, let's calculate it, actually. If I'm going to have e, I'm going to take it to the power i times pi. How much am I going to get out of this? Well, let's see. According to this rule, this should be cosine pi plus i times sine pi. Sine pi is equal to zero. Cosine pi is equal to negative one. And this is the equation I've been telling you that, that you, you might see on the internet somewhere. This is how we get it. Look, you remember very often during uh, mathematics or uh, especially during dynamic economic analysis, I've been repeating you that you know, it doesn't matter to which real power you're gonna take E for any other positive number, you cannot get negative number. However, if we do this with imaginary powers, it is possible. So look what we get over here. You have three most important mathematical constants, e, i, and pi, and if you combine them in such a way, you're getting negative one. Okay, but this is more like an interesting thing to know. Uh, however, we still haven't dealt with the complex root case uh, with the strive uh, to deal with uh, using Euler's relation. But look, we are extremely, extremely, extremely close uh, to the fruition. Okay, so let's set the stage back to what we have. Okay, so we've got uh, case 3 complex groups. Okay, so we've got second order differential equation with constant coefficient and constant term, but of course we are just solving the uh, homogeneous version for now, and we know that a1 squared is lower than 4a2. What does it imply to us? We know that in this case we're going to have two conjugate complex roots of the form h plus minus b i. Okay, what is h? h is of course negative a1 over 2, while b is 4, uh, I'm sorry, square root 4a2 minus a1. Remember because we've taken i up. So, now, <coughs> we found that complementary function for this case is equal to e h t a1 e to the power b i t plus a2 e negative b i t. And look, we already found this. The problem is that we had is that we didn't know how e is going to behave if we're going to take it to imaginary power. But now we do. So let's use these results. Okay, so we get that this is e to the power ht, and now we've got a1 times e, uh, a times, sorry, cosine, uh, a, a, a cosine, uh, uh, cosine, V T 
times cosine dt plus sine uh, plus i sine v t and plus a2 times cosine v t minus i sine v t okay what else can we do with this look let's collect expressions with cosine and sine separately then we get that this is e to the power ht a1 plus a2 cosine vt plus a1 minus a2 i i sine vt and look again remember we remember that those are arbitrary constants this one multiplied by i but look those arbitrary constants don't need to be real numbers they can be imaginary or real and now that our palette of possibilities has broadened we can actually accept the new possibilities and look if i'm going to define that a1 a5 is equal to a1 plus a2 and that a6 is equal to a1 minus a2 times i I we finally obtain the expression for the complementary function that we want and this expression is e to the power h t times a pi cosine v t plus a 6 times sine v t okay and look after doing a lot a lot of heavy lifting because this is what we've been doing for for the uh, for the time being we finally stumbled upon complementary function for the case of complex rules and this as you see it's not that complicated we can easily deal with this okay so now that we find this result let's just do an example to practice it uh, just to so you know how to use it well and please don't be afraid i know that we've been spending a lot of time deriving it you don't need to know how to derive it this is what you need to know how to use and of course you don't even need to know it by heart because you're gonna have it uh, on the you will gonna have for this formula during your exam however what is important for me is that you will know how to use it and i believe that this derivation is so amazingly beautiful that it's nice to see how all those things actually come together and especially that, that look maybe except for Taylor's rule and uh, McLaurin's uh, series I'm sorry there hasn't been much out of high school knowledge we have we, we've used here look we've used quadratic formula sines and cosines that's it the only thing uh, and of course e to the power of x that's it the rest is just putting those elements together in a very very clever and meaningful way okay so let's do the example so we've got y base uh, minus uh, i'm sorry plus 2y prime uh, plus 17 uh, y is equal to 34 okay this is a differential equation that we need to solve and we've got two initial conditions y0 is uh, 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 y0 is 3 and y prime of 0 is 11 yeah. 
Okay. So we start by the uh, with the particular integral. Okay, this is uh, a b over a two, which gives us thirty four over seventeen, which is two. Okay. Is it complex root case? Well, clearly, because a1 squared is equal to 4, while n is definitely smaller than 4a2, uh, which is equal to 40, uh, 68. Okay, so first let's find the solutions. We know that there are going to be complex roots, so we can right away. Right, h is equal to negative a1 over 2, which gives us negative 1, and v is equal to square root of 4a2 minus a1 squared, which is 68 minus 4, square root of a, n, of course, over 2, of 64 over 2, which is 4. Okay, and look. At this moment, we've got a complementary function in a general form, which, which gives us e to the power negative t times a5 times cosine 4t uh, plus a6 times sine 4 So, general solution is this. Plus 2. Okay, but look, we want to find also definite solution. So we substitute 0. If I substitute 0 here, this turns into 1, right? So this part is unnecessary. We've got a5, a5, cosine of 0 is 1, so we've got a5, plus sine of 0, uh, I'm sorry, this should be a6, yeah, and sine of 0 is 0, so we've got a5 plus 2, equals to 3, which tells us that a5 is equal to 1. Okay, then we need to differentiate this expression. And here we need to use the product rule. Okay, we've got that this is negative e, negative t, a5 cosine 4t plus a6 sine 4t. Of course, this is gone in differentiation because it's a constant. And then we've got plus e to the power negative t. Uh, and we need to differentiate. Uh, a, a, we need to a, differentiate those two expressions. Of, of course, remember, we need to use uh, uh, not only differentiate cosines into you know, their counterpart signs, uh, negative sign or, or sign into cosine, but also we need to use a uh, chain rule, and remember that we've got this 4 inside, so this 4 needs to come out, so we're going to have 4a negative 4, uh, a5 sign 4, uh, uh, sign 4t, plus uh, uh, plus 4a6 cosine 4t. Okay, this is very unpleasant, but uh, those things should get uh, 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 should simplify very nicely in a second. Okay, so over here we've got that y prime of 0. Uh, y prime of 0 is like, this is 1, this is 1, right, uh, because cosine of 0 is 1, and a5 is 1, so this is 
here we have negative 1 and 0, so this is negative uh, and negative 1. Okay, here we've got 1. Again, this turns into 0. And out of this, we've got plus 4a6. Okay, and this is equal to 11. So we've got that uh, 4a6 equals to 12 and a6 equals to 3. So the definite solution for our case uh, is simply uh, 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 we've got e to the power negative t times uh, cosine because uh, a5 is equal to just 1 for t plus 3 sine 4 t plus 2 Okay, so look, now we know how complementary function looks for the case of complex terms. We know how to find definite solution, general solution, which is, and, and we know how to calculate it, right? There remains only one interesting question here. What about dynamic stability of equation? And this is going to be the topic of our next video.